We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to The Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Illingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and sharing a selection of science-themed poetry. After all, we could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has found that changing the ways in which fruit is gathered from palm trees could help to conserve Amazon peatland forests. Across lowland peat and flooded woods you sway, rounded crowns piercing canopies with chestnut orbs that flicker in the sun. Juices, jams, wines, ice creams, roofs and carpets, lanterns, dreams. How many things connected with your existence. We cut you down with extreme prejudice, severing the roots that bind all things to this land. Wistfully, you whisper that if we would only hold our bodies close, then your treasures would be ours to keep. This poem is inspired by recent research published in Nature Sustainability, which has found that sustainably harvesting the fruit of palm trees will help to sustain both the local communities that rely on them and the high carbon stocks that they protect. The Morish palm, Mauritia flexosa, is a palm tree that is native to South America. It is dioecious, i.e. each palm has either male or female flowers, but not both with the female palms producing an edible fruit rich in vitamin C that can be eaten raw, fermented, and made into jams, ice cream, and other foodstuffs. Similarly, the palm leaves can be woven into various items and made into roofs for homes, while the stalk is made into carpets, fishing poles, lanterns, and torches. Given their utility, these palms play a significant socio-economic and ecological role in South America, and many communities depend on them for their survival. For example, in Peru, Moorish palm ecosystems represent 1%, or approximately 7,000 kilometres squared of the Amazonian Valley Forest, and contribute millions of dollars per year to the country's GDP. Where currently harvested, sale of the palm's fruit represents up to 22% of the income of families from this region. In addition to this, the tropical peatlands that sustain these palms in northeastern Peru are one of the most carbon-rich landscapes in the world, Keeping these forests intact ensures that this carbon is kept in the ground rather than being emitted into the atmosphere and exasperating the current climate catastrophe. Unfortunately, as the fruits are typically harvested by felling female palms, the unique biodiversity and high carbon stocks of these ecosystems is under threat. In this new study, researchers used data from 93 sites across the palm swamp forests in northeastern Peru to measure the effect that fruit harvesting was having. They found that cutting down female palm trees to harvest the fruit has halved the total amount that is available to local communities. The researchers also found that in those regions where the fruits were harvested by climbing, rather than cutting them down, there was a much higher number of fruit-bearing female trees. Given that each of these trees takes about 10 years to reach maturity, by switching to tree climbing to collect the fruit, This study found that the overall harvest could increase by 51%, generating an additional $62 million a year for the local economy, as well as helping to keep the high levels of carbon in the ground. These findings therefore demonstrate the high cost of unsustainable resource extraction, whilst also outlining a practical path to conserve and sustainably exploit one of the most carbon-rich landscapes on our planet. Now that you've heard the science, Let me read the poem to you again. Across lowland peat and flooded woods you sway, rounded crowns piercing canopies with chestnut orbs that flicker in the sun. Juices, jams, wines, ice creams, roofs and carpets, lanterns, dreams. 
how many things connected with your existence. We cut you down with extreme prejudice, severing the roots that bind all things to this land. Wistfully you whisper that if we would only hold our bodies close, then your treasures would be ours to keep. In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. In this episode, I'll be reading Palm Tree by Rabindranath Tagore. Rabindranath Tagore was a Bengali polymath who worked as a poet, writer, playwright, composer, philosopher, social reformer and painter. Born in what was Calcutta and is now Kolkata in 1861, he was highly influential in introducing Indian culture to the West and vice versa and is generally regarded as the outstanding creative artist of early 20th century India. Although Tagore wrote successfully in all literary genres, he was first of all a poet. Among his 50 plus volumes of poetry are Manasi, published in 1890, Sonatari, published in 1894, Gitmalia, published in 1914, and Balaka, published in 1916. In 1913, he became the first non-European to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature, Tagore died in 1941 at the age of 80. Palm Tree by Rabindranath Tagore Palm Tree, single-legged giant, topping other trees, peering at the firmament. It longs to pierce the black cloud ceiling and fly away, away, if only it had wings. The tree seems to express its wish in the tossing of its head. Its fronds heave and swish, it thinks. Maybe my leaves are feathers, and nothing stops me now from rising on their flutter. All day the fronds, the wind-blown tree, soar and flap and shudder, as though it thinks it can fly, as though it wanders in the skies, travelling who knows where, wheeling past the stars. And then as soon as the wind dies down, the fronds subside, subside. The mind of the tree returns to earth, recalls that earth is its mother, and then it likes once more its earthly corner. Thank you for listening to the Poetry of Science. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.